Hello everyone, this is RP Dev Jesco, and welcome to another episode of our beginner series. And today we are going to talk about scriptable objects in Unity 3D. This video will be broken down into two distinct parts. The first part will be all about what scriptable objects are, and the second part will be an implementation that will allow us to save and load data at runtime. So let's sit back, relax, and let's learn about scriptable objects in Unity 3D. <music> Now before I get into the actual meat and bones of this video, I want to point out that this video has been 100% scripted, so if I sound stunted or different from usual, you know why. The very first thing we want to do here is to look at the documentation of scriptable objects in Unity 3D and understand what the manual is telling us about it. So let's navigate to https colon slash slash docs.unity3d.com slash manual slash class dash scriptable object dot html. Now, let's go ahead and read what, the dis what this description of scriptable object is. Scriptable object is a class that allows you to store large quantities of shared data independent from script instances. instances. Do not confuse this class with the similarly named serialized object, which is an editor class that and fills a different purpose. Consider, for example, that you have made a prefab with a script which has an array of a million integers. The array occupies four megabytes of memory and is owned by the prefab. Each time you instantiate that prefab, you'll get a copy of that array. If you, cr if you created 10 game objects, then you would end up with 40 megs of array data for the 10 instances. <coughs> Unity serializes all primitive types, strings, arrays, lists, types specific to Unity, such as Vector3, and your custom classes with the serializable attribute as copies belonging to the objects they are declared in. This means that if you created a scriptable object and stored a million integers in an array it declares, then the array will be stored with that instance. The instance, the instances, oh, son of a bitch. I can't read. <clears throat> the instances are thought to own their individual data. Scriptable object fields or any other or any Unity engine dot object fields such as mono behavior, mesh, game object, and so on, are stored by reference as opposed to by value. If you have a script with a reference to the scriptable object with a million integers, Unity will only store reference to the scriptable scriptable object in the script data. The scriptable object in turn stores the array, 10 instances of a prefab that has a reference to the scriptable object that holds 4 megs of data would total roughly 4 megs and not 40 megs as discussed in the other example. The intended use case for using scriptable objects is to reduce memory usage by avoiding copies of values, but you could also use it to define pluggable data sets. An example of this would be to imagine an NPC shop in an RPG game. You would create multiple assets for your custom shop content scriptable object, each defining a set of items that are available for purchase. In a scenario where the game has three zones, each go zone could offer different tier items. Your shop script would reference a shop contents object that defines what items are available. Please see the scripting reference for examples. Once you have defined a scriptable object derived class, you can use the create men asset menu attribute to make it easy to create custom assets using your class. Tip, when working with scriptable object references in the inspector, you can double click the reference field to open the inspector of your scriptable object. You can also create a custom editor to define the look of the inspector for your type to help manage the data it represents. If all of this confused you, don't worry. I can and will explain it in layman's terms. A scriptable object reduces the memory cost of accessing certain bits of data. It also is a very good way to not use traditional data types like XML, JSON, SQL in some instances. This makes it a very powerful and useful tool to have in your arsenal when developing games 
in Unity 3D. With that out of the way, we should look to see a script reference for scriptable objects. So navigate to https docs.unity3d.com slash scriptable reference scriptable object html. The description is as followed. Description, a class you can derive from if you want to create objects that don't need to be attached to game objects. This is the most useful this is most useful for assets which are only meant to store data. To make it easy to create scriptable instances that are bound to assets in your project, see create menu create asset menu attribute. This means that a scriptable object doesn't need to be attached to a game object in the editor, which basically means one less thing you need to worry about when dealing with attaching code to your objects in the Unity editor, which is an added yet very nice bonus. The main methods we need to know about is create instance, destroy, find object of type, find objects of type, and instantiate. So first, let's talk about what create instance will do. So create instance creates an instance of a scriptable object. Destroy removes a game object, component, or asset. Find object of type returns the first active loaded object of type type, whatever the type may be. Find objects of type returns a list of all active ob loaded ugh, returns a list of all active loaded objects of type type. And finally, instantiate clones the original clones the object original and returns the clone. Lastly, we need to know a little bit more about that create menu, or create asset menu attribute. So let's navigate to Unity or docs.unity3d.com scriptable ref or script reference create asset menu attribute. So let's read the description. Mark a scriptable object derived type to be automatically listed in the asset create submenu, so that instances of the type can easily can be easily created and stored in the project as .asset file. And the three main properties available for this are file name, the default file name used ugh, English. I don't use it. File name, the default file name used by newly created instances of this type. Menu name, the display name for this type shown in the asset slash create menu. And finally, order, the position of the menu item within the assets slash create menu. All right, so now that we've got a bit of an understanding of what scriptable objects do, that concludes this portion of this video, and we will now move into the part everyone's been waiting for, the actual scripting.